Oh, I love puppies. Don't you, Squeaks? Oh, hey everyone. Squeaks and I were just hanging out and watching some cute pet videos. Here, check this one out. Oh, yeah, cats' big pointy ears are really cute, but did you know that those cute ears help them have super hearing? It's true. Do you want to watch that video that you and Jesse made about that and other cool cat facts? <laughs> All right, let's check it out. What if I told you that there might be a sneaky predator with superpowers in your house right now? If you live with one of these, there is. I'm talking about cats. And even if you do have a cat of your own, I bet you don't know some amazing things about our furry little friends. For example, did you know that all pet cats are actually related to lions and other big cats like tigers, leopards, and jaguars? Wait, this is related to this? Yes, it is. All cats, from the biggest tiger to the tiniest of house cats, evolved from the same small cat-like creature that lived millions of years ago called Proelurus, or first cat. Then, after a long time, there came to be two major types of cats. One kind became the bigger cats, like the lion and the tiger. And the other kind became the smaller cats, which includes the ones we keep as pets today. So, if all the big cats and all the little cats descended from this same animal from long, long ago, that means they're related even if it is only distantly. That's one big furry family. Now, another cool thing about cats, they have excellent hearing. Lots of animals, including dogs, have better hearing than we do, but cats can hear better than both humans and dogs. Even if your cat just looks like it's curled up enjoying a relaxing nap, it's still extremely aware of its surroundings. Their little ears are super sensitive and they're always listening. Your cat can hear everything that's going on around it, from the sound of you listening to music in your bedroom all the way up the stairs to the sound of birds chirping outside in your neighbor's yard. In fact, cats can hear things up to four times further away than you or I can. And not only can they hear things from far away, they can figure out exactly where those faraway sounds are coming from. So if your cat's snoozing in the basement and you open the kitchen cupboard where you keep their favorite treats, they'll probably come running. But if you open another cabinet in a different part of the kitchen, they'll probably be able to tell the difference and just keep snoozing. Thousands of years ago, cats needed this super sense of hearing to help them track down food and to escape predators in the wild. Today, now that they live among humans who help provide for them, they don't need it quite as much. But it's always good to know when that treat cupboard opens. And lastly, our third cool thing about cats, they rule. Well, sort of. Some ancient cultures, like people who lived in Egypt thousands of years ago, treated cats like royalty, almost as if they were kings and queens. Early Egyptians were thought to have had problems with rats in their homes. In order to get rid of the rats, they brought in cats to hunt them. And the people liked the cats so much that they kept them and treated them extremely well. Ancient Egyptians even mummified the animals for their journey to the afterlife, just like they did with their human rulers. So sorry dogs, in ancient Egypt at least, cats ran the show. Now the next time you see a cat, you'll know that you're looking at a super cuddly animal with super hearing that was once treated like royalty and is related to lions and tigers. Hmm, you know Squeaks, kittens are pretty cute, but I think puppies are even cuter. I don't know. Check out this puppy video. You're right Squeaks, I don't have to choose a favorite. Kittens and puppies can both be equally cute. Speaking of puppy videos, I've got another video here that will teach us some neat stuff about dogs too. Let's watch. This is Louie, he's a hound. This is Ozzy, he's an Australian cattle dog. And this is Abby, she's a corgi. They look pretty different, but they're all examples of humans' very first pets, dogs. Even if you have a dog of your own, I bet you don't know some of these amazing things about our furry best friends. For example, did you know that all dogs are related to wolves? That's right, this is related to this. Cool, huh? Remember when I said dogs were humans' first pets? Well, about 15,000 years ago, humans lived alongside wolves. And in time, some of these wolves became domesticated, meaning that they changed from being wild to being able to live and even work closely with humans. So over thousands of years, some of those wolves became the domesticated dogs that we know and love. Wild wolves still live in many places in the world today, but there are also more than 400 different breeds of dogs. And all of the wolves and dogs on Earth are thought to have 
descended from the same animal, a predator that roamed our planet millions of years ago. Scientists called it Eusion divisi, and it looked a lot like today's wolves with one major difference. It was probably a lot bigger. So if all wolves and dogs descended from this early predator, that means wolves and dogs are related. Dogs are also related to other animals that look similar to them, including foxes, jackals, and coyotes. Together with wolves, these dog-like mammals are called canines. That's one big furry family. Now, another cool thing about dogs, they're super smellers. Their sensitive noses have 40 times more cells in them for smelling than ours do. Plus, they have the ability to wiggle their noses in ways that we can't. And that's not just a neat trick. By wiggling each nostril separately, dogs can figure out which direction a smell is coming from. So when they're born, puppies can't hear or see anything, but they quickly learn to find their mom and other important things in the world around them by just using their sense of smell. Dogs also use their smelling skills when they meet new dog friends. Instead of shaking paws or barking to say hello, dogs sniff each other's butts. Dogs don't recognize each other by name or even by looks. They identify other dogs by how they smell. That's where they sniff because all dogs have special scent glands on their rears, and dogs use those scents to learn about each other. By sniffing, a dog can tell if another pup is young or old, a boy or a girl, if he's sick or healthy, and even what kind of mood he's in. Not all dog sniffing involves butts, though. Lots of dogs put their powerful sense of smell to use in other ways. Some dogs can sniff out and rescue people who are lost. Some hunt for escaped criminals, and a few are even being trained to sniff out deadly diseases. That's awesome! Super dogs to the rescue! And lastly, our third cool thing about dogs, some of them can remember more words than a baby person. Even though they can't talk, dogs make great listeners. Most of them can understand about 165 words, way more than just sit or stay. And some dogs can remember even more than that. One Border Collie named Chaser was trained to understand over a thousand spoken words, and she learned those words as quickly as a small child would. So, dogs, are smart. Now whenever you see a pooch, whether it looks like Abby, Ozzy, Louie, or someone completely different, you'll know that you're looking at a really smart relative of wild wolves with a super sense of smell. Oh, I know another good cat video. Check this out. Oh, why are we watching a video of a tiger when I said it was a cat video? Because tigers are cats, remember? Jesse taught us that in the video we watched earlier. And all big cats are related to house cats, not just tigers. Would you like to learn more about big cats from all over the world? Whoa, Squeaks, who knew a rat could roar like a lion? Hi guys, Squeaks and I were just working on our big cat roars. And when I say big cat, I don't mean your neighbor's really fat pet cat. I mean a big wild cat like one of these guys. Not all wild cats are considered big cats, though. So how do you spot the difference between a regular wild cat, like a serval, and a true big cat, like a lion? I'll tell you. Wildlife experts say that there are four main groups of big cats, lions, tigers, leopards, and jaguars. But the easiest way to tell if a wild cat is a big cat is to ask, can it roar? Only true big cats have the ability to roar. Other wild cats can growl, but they don't quite roar like these four do. Like all wild cats, big cats are carnivores, meaning they eat other animals. They're skilled hunters and need lots of land to roam and lots of prey to eat. Even though big cats have a lot in common, if you know what to look for, you'll be able to tell them apart in no time. Let's start with the lions. You can only find these guys in Africa. Lions have light brown fur with a little tuft of black fur at the ends of their tails. Male lions have shaggy manes that make them look a lot bigger than the females. Most cats prefer to spend time alone, but not lions. Lions are the only cats that live in groups. A group of lions is called a pride. Lions even hunt in these groups. Their preferred snacks are zebras, wildebeest, and African buffalo. Lions move fast when they hunt, and they can jump really, really far. A lion can leap more than 10 meters in one bound. That's as long as a school bus. Tigers are just as impressive as lions. They're the biggest of the big cats. A Siberian tiger can be twice as big as an African lion. You can find all kinds of tigers throughout the continent of Asia. They live the farthest north of all the big cats. And I'm pretty sure that you know what these cats look like. Most tigers are orange with black stripes on their bodies. In fact, 
Tigers are the only big cats that have stripes. These markings help them blend in with the tall grasses as they sneak up on their prey, usually deer or water buffalo. Another cool thing about tigers, they can swim. Some have even been spotted crossing lakes carrying heavy prey in their mouths. Our last two groups of big cats are probably the easiest to mix up because they look a lot alike, leopards and jaguars. Both of these big cats have yellowish coats with dark spots on them called rosettes, but a jaguar's rosettes have at least one black dot in the center, while leopards don't. So it might be pretty hard to tell apart a leopard and a jaguar unless you check them out up close, which I don't recommend. But it's easy to know which is which if you know what part of the world they live in. Leopards have the biggest range of all the big cats. That means they live across the widest areas, and they can be found throughout Africa and Asia. And leopards are the smallest of the big cats, but they're not that small. They can weigh up to 80 kilograms and get nearly two meters long. That's about the size of a full-grown man. Like all big cats, they're excellent hunters and prey on animals like impalas, monkeys, and even porcupines. Leopards are also the strongest climbers of all the cats and can carry an animal twice their size up a tree to munch on or save for later. Jaguars, on the other hand, are a little bigger than leopards and they live in a totally different part of the world, in the rainforest and grasslands of Central and South America. And they often hunt animals that live in the water, like crocodiles and fish. So as you can imagine, like tigers, Jaguars are really good swimmers. So now, if you happen to bump into a big cat, you can tell what kind it is. But lions, tigers, leopards, and jaguars are only four of more than 30 species of cats on our planet. Other wildcats might not be quite as large as the big cats, but they're just as amazing. From caracals to ocelots to lynxes, there are so many more cool cats to learn about. Those were some pretty big cat squeaks. But what about this little dog? Wow, <laughs> he's making a pretty big mess, huh, Squeaks? Hey, have you ever noticed that a wet dog can get pretty stinky? Weird, right? You'd think all of that water would clean them off. Hmm. Oh, you and Jesse learned all about this before. Cool. Why don't you play me the video so I can learn the answer too? Squeaks and I made a new friend yesterday. Her name is Cassie and she's a puppy. She loves to play fetch, go for walks, and roll in the dirt. It's so exciting to make a new friend and we had a great time playing with Cassie in the mud. But after we were done playing, Cassie really needed a bath. So we filled up a bathtub with warm water and soap to wash away the dirt from Cassie's fur and to get her nice and clean. But after her bath, Cassie's fur smelled kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, Squeaks, she smelled pretty stinky. She hadn't smelled nearly as much before her bath, which seemed weird because normally soap and water make things stop smelling. So if Cassie was all clean now, shouldn't that have made her smell better? Squeaks and I wanted to make sure she was okay, so we did some research. And it turns out almost all dogs smell after getting wet, even if they just had a bath. That's because of what's in their fur. A microscope is a tool that lets you zoom in on something really closely to see tiny things that would be too small to see otherwise. And if you use a powerful microscope to look very closely at a dog's fur, you'll find that there are lots of small living things in their fur. We call these microbes, which just means tiny living things. These microbes are so small, we can't see them without the help of a microscope. Some of the microbes in the fur are yeast, a type of fungus. Others are bacteria that help keep a dog's skin healthy. Oh, don't worry, Squeaks, we don't have to get rid of these microbes. They are a lot like germs, but they don't mean that a dog is sick or hurt. They're good germs. Microbes actually live all over the place. We just can't see them because they're so small. Most of the microbes on Cassie's fur won't bother her, and some of them can even be very helpful. But microbes sometimes leave things behind. You already know that when big animals like you and me eat food, we leave behind anything our bodies can't use when we go to the toilet. Well, microbes do the same thing, except without actual toilets, of course. We call what they leave behind waste, and there are bits of it wherever they live, including in Cassie's fur. It's so teeny tiny that we don't notice it or its smell at first. But then something happens that makes it more noticeable. Exactly! The water in the bathtub got the waste all wet. Lots of things are smellier when they get wet. 
Just think about what happens when you leave wet shoes lying around. Water helps smelly things move around more, get into the air more, and get into our noses faster. So when we gave Cassie a bath, we got rid of the dirt and mud on her fur coat, but we also stirred up all of that stinky microbe waste. And that made it easier for us to smell, even though Cassie was much cleaner. Oh, great question, Squeaks. There are actually some really easy ways to get rid of that wet dog smell really quickly. First, if your dog gets wet, you can dry them off with a towel or a hair dryer set to blow cool air. That stops the water from spreading the smell of the microbe waste. Plus, you can give your dog's fur a cool hairstyle at the same time. And Cassie smelled a lot better once we dried her off. There's also a special dog shampoo that you can use to give a dog a bath without as much of the smell getting into the air. Oh, I'm glad Cassie is clean and healthy too. And I'm so excited to learn more about the microbes that live all over our world. Maybe we can do some more research later, but Let's go see if Cassie is ready for another game of fetch. Have you ever seen a dog chase its own tail? Watch. That's pretty silly, huh, Squeaks? <laughs> Great observation. Cats and dogs both do have tails. What do you think they use them for? Great answer, Squeaks. Animals can use their tails to show how they're feeling. Like a dog wagging its tail is telling the world that it's happy. But cats and dogs and all kinds of other animals, including rats, use their tails for all kinds of stuff. Hey Squeaks, look what we have here. We just got an awesome question from one of our viewers. They want to know, why do animals have tails? That's such a great question. Lots of animals have tails. Yes, including rat squeaks, but humans don't. Personally, I'm pretty glad we don't have tails. Can you imagine trying to sit in class at school with the tail getting in the way all the time? But the real reason other animals have tails is that they need them and we don't. I bet you could even guess what some animals use their tails for. When you think of an animal with a tail, what's the first one that comes to mind? A dog, that's a great one, Squeaks. Maybe you have a dog in your family or you know someone who does. And I bet you've seen that dog wag their tail a lot. When dogs wag their tails, that's often because they're happy or excited. Since they can't talk using words, their tails do the talking for them. And if you see a dog with their tail lowered between their legs, that might mean they're scared. So that's one reason some animals have tails, to help show what they're feeling. Can you think of any other animals that have tails? Maybe one you'd see on a farm? Yeah, horses have tails too. Sometimes horses use their tails to communicate like dogs do, but their tails are also useful for something else, flicking away all those pesky flies buzzing around them. Some other animals, like cows, do the same thing. That's true, Squeaks. There's another very important example that we haven't talked about yet, rats. Rats mainly use their tails for a different reason to help them balance. You know how sometimes if you're walking along the edge of a curb and you start to feel like you might lose your balance, you can throw your arms out to the side like this and keep yourself from falling over? Well, rats and lots of other animals use their tails in the same way. If they're climbing something really high or narrow where they might fall, they can stretch out their tail to help keep their balance just like you stretch out your arms. Cats use their tails for balance too, which is really important for them because they jump very high. And some animals like monkeys can actually use their tails almost like an extra hand. A monkey's tail helps them balance, but they can also use it to hang onto the tree branches and swing. I know, it would be so much fun. It'd be like having a swing set wherever you go. So whether they're using their tails to communicate, flick away bugs, or balance, tails are really important for lots of animals. And there are plenty of other ways animals use their tails that we haven't even talked about. But humans don't have a tail at all because we don't need one for any of those reasons. We have other ways to show what we're thinking or feeling, like by talking or even just using our faces to smile or frown. If bugs bother us, we can swat them away with our hands. And since we walk on two legs, we don't need a tail to help us balance. We can use our arms for that, like when you're walking on the edge of a curve. So even though tails are really helpful for lots of other animals, for us humans, they would mostly just get in the way. Whew. That was a great animal video watching session. 
What do you want to do now, Squeaks? That's a great idea. Squeaks likes watching animals in videos, but he likes to play with real cats and dogs too. So we're gonna head over to our friend Nick's house and play with his dog, Abby the Corgi. We hope you had fun learning about our furry friends with us. We want you to keep on learning and having fun with me, Squeaks, and all our friends. Hit the subscribe button and we'll see you next time here at the fort.